Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our online media ministry. Join with us as we sing praise to our God. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Sing bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless his name.
Bless the name of Jesus. He's awesome.
From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will see All the goodness of God I love you I love you Lord For your mercies never fail For your mercies never fail me All my days From the moment that I wake up, the moment that I wake up until, until I lay my head, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. Through the fire, you have led me through the fire, darkest night. Darkest night, you are close, you are close, like no other. Known you as a father, known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived, and I have lived in the good.
of the goodness of the goodness of God. Of God. I will sing. I will sing of the goodness. Good morning. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We bless you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad. Lord, we've entered your gates with thanksgiving and we've come into your courts with praise, being thankful unto you and blessing your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for another time in your presence because we know that in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand pleasures forevermore. Lord, as your word comes forth, God, thank you, Lord, that as we hear your word, our lives will never be the same again. We will be enlightened and we will be strengthened and we will be encouraged to know that you are with us. I pray over every single person, Lord, under the sound of my voice, Lord, that as your word goes forth this morning, thank you for transforming and healing and delivering. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Good morning to you. And our text this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Psalms chapter 50 verse 5 and I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Psalms chapter 50 verse 5 reads, gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. Gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. And the title of my message this morning is Preservation Through Sacrifice to God. Preservation Through Sacrifice to God. Now this psalm, Psalm 50 that we have read, is said to be written by an Asaph who was a musician in those times. There was an Asaph in David's time who was one of David's chief musicians and his family appeared to have continued in their line of music for many generations to come. Asaphs are also recorded in the Bible as secretaries and or recorders and Asaphs are said to have written some of the Psalms. 
Now, in this particular psalm, it would appear that the Lord was asking for those who had made a covenant with him by their sacrifice and their right living to be gathered before him. Now, this psalm, Psalm 50, is what we call a psalm of instruction. It tells of the coming of Christ and the day of judgment in which both God will call men to account. God is a gracious God and will accept those who seek him right. Now, God is demonstrating in this psalm that is those who genuinely sacrifice that will get his attention. That's why Psalm 50 verse 6 reads, Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. God is a righteous judge and will reward us accordingly. Those who have made a covenant by sacrifice are those who are considered to have entered into a covenant or a contract with the Lord by their sacrificial living. Where it says, gather together for me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This simply means gather the saints who have an interest in God's favor and loving kindness and were sanctified, set apart for his service and for his glory. Another version of Psalm 50 verse 5 reads, Gather my saints, godly ones, covenant people together unto me, those that have made, ratified a covenant with me by sacrifice. So God, first of all, will call to him those who have shown their relationship to him by sacrifice. Now, God makes it clear in the Old Testament and even later in this psalm that he's not interested in sacrifice that is void of a holy lifestyle that reflects the... Now, God makes it clear in the Old Testament and even later in this psalm that he's not interested in a sacrifice that is void of a holy lifestyle that reflects the relationship that the worshipper has with God. So this is not teaching that a person's attempt to sacrifice to God is the way to be accepted by him. There must be a holy lifestyle that follows the sacrificial living. So the Lord says, gather together for me those who have made a covenant by sacrifice, those who have sacrificed their life, their time, their substance, their abilities, everything they've sacrificed. God, gather them for me because I want to bless them. Gather them to me because I have something to tell them. Gather them for me because I'm about to release favor. I'm about to release victory. I'm about to release success. I'm about to release, try, gather together those who've made a covenant, who've said in their hearts that I will live a holy life. I will live a sacrificial life. I will sacrifice my life to the Lord. Gather them together for me. If you believe, say amen. The Passion Bible reads, gather all my lovers, my godly ones whose hearts are one with me, those who have entered into my holy covenant. Are you one who is a lover of God? Are you in covenant with God? Are you in a covenant of sacrifice with the Lord? Now let us look very briefly at what is a sacrifice and when you look at the, um, the Oxford Dictionary definition, it's an act of slaughtering an animal or a person or surrendering a possession as an offering to a deity. Giving up something valued for the sake of other considerations. So the Lord in this season and this morning is saying, gather together for me those who've given up valuable time, substance, goods, sacrificed of themselves for me. Those who are sacrificing for the kingdom, sacrificing because they love me, sacrificing because they honor me, sacrificing because they've laid their lives down for me and they are continually doing that. Gather then for me. Hallelujah. Are you one of them? We know that when we talk about preservation, it's something being kept in its original state and being preserved from harm and injury. 
So we are looking at this morning those who have been preserved by sacrifice and their lives that represented sacrificial living. And as a result of their sacrificial living, they were preserved. We first of all look at the very familiar character, Esther. We know the story of Esther and how there was a plot to kill all of the Jews at that time. Esther's uncle, Mordecai, had told her that Haman had organized a conspiracy to kill all of the Jews. This is set out in the book of Esther, chapter 3, when a conspiracy had been revealed against King Ahasuerus, who was ruling at the time. Those who were planning the conspiracy were killed, and after that, Haman was promoted and placed above all the kings. And the king had commanded that everyone should pay homage to Haman and worship him. Now we know the story that Esther's uncle Mordecai, he refused to worship Haman. And when Haman heard that Mordecai refused to worship him, he now conspired to kill Mordecai and to kill all of the Jews. And when Mordecai heard about this conspiracy, he cried out loud at the gate. So when Esther heard this, in chapter 4, verse 15, it reads, Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Esther made the sacrifice to go before the king and to break or breach protocol so that her people could be preserved and be saved and delivered. So even though Haman had planned evil to befall the Jews, indeed it backfired and went back to the sender, which was Haman. It backfired because of Esther's sacrifice. The Lord preserved her and preserved her people and preserved her uncle Mordecai. She sacrificed by breaking protocol and going before the king at a time when she shouldn't have. And the Lord gave her favor and she was able to avert the plan of the enemy. The Lord gave her favor with the king and the plan of the enemy against the Jewish people was averted. Esther sacrificed by putting her life at risk, by breaking protocol, and her sacrifice preserved her community, preserved her people, and preserved her family. Esther broke protocol and she went before the king, and indeed she was favored, and she asked that the king and Haman come to a banquet that she will prepare on their behalf. And it was at this banquet that she had the opportunity to reveal to the king the conspiracy against the Jews. And we know the story that Haman was exposed. The same punishment that Haman had prepared for Mordecai now became his own punishment. We see in the book of Esther chapter 8, it shows us the result of Esther's sacrifice that the evil decree of Haman was reversed and the Jewish people were preserved and the evil decree was revoked. The decree that the Jews would be killed and the conspiracy, the plan, everything was revoked. In the book of Esther, chapter 8, verse 11 to 13, King Ahasuerus had written a decree revoking the evil decree of Haman and bringing preservation and protection to the Jews. So we see here that Esther's sacrifice resulted in preservation to her people. And Esther 8, verse 11 to 13 reads, By these letters, the king permitted the Jews who were in every city to gather together and protect their lives, to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the forces of any people or province that would assault them, both little children and women, and to plunder their possessions on one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar. 
A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province and published for all people so that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves of their enemies. So because of Esther's sacrifice, an evil decree was revoked and a favorable decree was put in place. We've read that the king permitted this letter to be written and shed abroad that the Jews should be protected, should be covered, should be preserved Amen. The Jews were preserved because of Esther's sacrifice. Esther's sacrifice changed laws and it changed the evil decree. It revoked it, it counteracted it, it reversed it. I come to prophesy to you today that your sacrifice will preserve you in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you are doing that is a sacrifice before the Lord, the Lord will use that as a point of contact for your preservation in this season, for your preservation of your family, for the preservation of your children, for the preservation of your lineage, for the preservation of your help, for the preservation of your family, for the preservation of your children, for the preservation of your job. You are preserved as you walk in sacrifice unto the Lord. And if you believe, say amen. We look secondly at the book of Ruth. We know the story of Ruth, a wonderful story. It started off with a sad tone where Ruth got married and unfortunately her husband died. She didn't have any children with her husband at the time that he died. And also her sister-in-law had also married her husband's brother and he also died. Her mother-in-law Naomi said to both Ruth and her sister-in-law, Opa, that they should return back to their families and see whether they would be able to marry again and have children. Ruth's mother-in-law said to her that she should go back to her father's house as she, her mother-in-law, wouldn't be able to have children in good time to grow up so that Ruth could marry them. The book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 15, reads that Naomi said to Ruth, Look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from the following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Ruth sacrificed her life, which indeed preserved a generation to come. Her sacrifice of her life preserved a generation, preserved her destiny, and her life and her sacrifice took her to a place where she never, ever imagined she would get to. Her sacrificial kindness preserved her lineage. Ruth's sacrifice, as we know the story, led to her marrying Boaz, a multi-millionaire. Ruth's sacrificial kindness and her obedience took her where she never thought she would go. Her sacrifice changed times and it changed seasons. Her sacrifice preserved her destiny and the destiny of those who were to come after her. Because of Ruth's sacrifice, a lineage was preserved. As we know, Ruth is in the lineage of David and David is in the lineage of Jesus. So when Ruth married Boaz, they had a child called Obed. Obed is the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David and David is in the lineage of Jesus. So because of Ruth's sacrifice of not going back to her father's house, but staying in her husband's house, following her mother-in-law, she said, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where they bury you, I, they will bury me. That took her that sacrifice took her to a place where she never believed she would get to. She married a multimillionaire and she's in the lineage of Jesus. Her sacrifice, Ruth's sacrifice, brought an entire change to her destiny and to her life. If you believe, say amen. The question for us all this morning is, is there a sacrifice that is speaking on your behalf? Is there a sacrifice that is speaking for you that will affect 
your entire life and generation and will stand as preservation for you. What is the sacrifice that you have made? What are you sacrificing for the Lord? How can you say that you are sacrificed for the Lord that will speak on your behalf? Ruth told her mother-in-law that your people will be my people and your God will be my God. She sacrificed her life for her mother-in-law. This was, she took her mother-in-law as her own mother and said, I will follow you wherever you go. We are together forever. What is the sacrifice that you are making that is speaking on your behalf? Do you sacrifice your time? to the Lord? Do you sacrifice your money to the Lord? Do you sacrifice your gifts, your talents, your abilities, that which is within you? Are you giving it to the Lord? Are you sacrificing it for the Lord? Your life, is it a life of sacrifice? What are you doing for the Lord? Do you sacrifice your time to win souls for the kingdom? Jesus is coming soon. We are in perilous times, wars, rumors of wars, sickness, trouble, issues, terrors. What are you doing for the Lord in this season? What are you sacrificing? Psalm 50 verse 15, further on down in the Psalms, reads, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Now we know that Psalm 50 verse 5 says, Gather together for me those who've made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And then we now get to verse 15. So we jump from 5 to verse 15 where the Lord says, So call upon me in the day of trouble. So he was saying, those who've made a sacrifice, gather them for me. Gather, bring them, bring them. Wherever you are, I want to meet with you. I want to talk to you. I have something to tell you. Then we get to verse 15. He said, because in the day of trouble call upon me and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me because you are one of those that I've gathered hallelujah that I've asked to gather gather those together to me those who've made a covenant by sacrifice gather them for me because in the day of trouble ah if they call upon me I will answer and I will deliver and you will glorify me because I'm a God of covenant and I recognize your sacrifice It's your sacrifice that will speak for you in the day of trouble. What sacrifice is speaking for you? What can you say that you are sacrificing, that you are indeed doing for the Lord? What do you do in the house of God? What do you do for the Lord? Do you evangelize? Do you witness? Do you tell people about Jesus Christ? Do you pray for the sick? Call someone and encourage them. What will the Lord say? that Sister Jane or Brother John is sacrificing for me. What sacrifice is speaking for you in Jesus' mighty name? We look again in the book of Daniel. We know the story of Daniel and how the Lord delivered him from the lion's den and how he was preserved. Daniel chapter 6 tells us that a decree had been made that whoever petitioned or prayed to any other god or man apart from the king at that time, King Darius, should be cast into the lion's den. And King Darius signed and sealed this decree. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 reads, Now when Daniel knew that this writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he sat down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. So we see here that Daniel sacrificed his life to prayer. And it was his prayer life that preserved him in the time of trouble. When it was found that Daniel was going against the laws of only worshipping the king for 30 days, a plan was made to throw him into the lion's den. But because of Daniel's solid and sacrificial prayer life, 
praying all the time, his prayer life preserved him in the day of trouble. Because of his sacrificial prayer life, he was preserved in the day of trouble. His sacrifice preserved him. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and say, Lord, let my sacrifice preserve me in the name of Jesus. The question for us all this morning is, what is your prayer life like? Do you pray? When did you last pray? How often do you pray? Verse 10 of chapter 6 of the book of Daniel says that he, Daniel, knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. So as was his custom, that means that he regularly prayed. Prayer was part of his routine. It was part of his life. The question for us all this morning is, is prayer part of your schedule? Is prayer part of your timetable? Is prayer part of your plan for the day? Is prayer part of your to-do list? What role does prayer play in your life? When did you pray last? We know that Daniel fasted, hallelujah. The question for us all, hallelujah. Is fasting part of your schedule? Is fasting part of your plan for the day? When did you fast last to speak to the Lord? Daniel fasted and Daniel prayed. And it's his prayer life, it's his fasting life that preserved him. Can you imagine that Daniel was placed in a lion's den, the place of danger, the place of destruction? There was no shadow of a doubt in anyone's mind that once he was placed in the lion's den, he would be destroyed and he would be killed. But because of the sacrificial prayer life, because of his fasting life, it, it reads in Daniel chapter 6 that often he prayed through times the day and that was his custom often. So he had done it regularly for a very long period of time. This became part of him that he sacrificed his life for prayer. And it spoke for him in the time of trouble. His sacrificial prayer life preserved him and it preserved his life. He was not consumed and he was not destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. I prophesy to everyone under the sound of my voice this morning, as you sacrifice your time in prayer and as you sacrifice your time in fasting, the Lord will preserve you and your family. Family, uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak uh, preservation over you as you sacrifice uh, your gifts, your abilities, your talents, whatever it is uh, you are sacrificing for the Lord. Uh, I prophesy uh, and I decree and I declare uh, that the Lord will preserve you. Uh, the Lord will keep you. He said, gather together for me those who've made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Uh, and I prophesy this morning, as you make a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice, you will be preserved and your generation will be preserved in the name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 6 verse 11 speaks of the conspiracy against Daniel. It talks of how they conspired to put him in the lion's den. I encourage you this morning, is there a conspiracy against you? Are forces coming against you? Is the enemy raging a war against you? Is there a battle against you? Is there a problem yet to be solved? Is there a sickness yet to be solved? healed? Is there an ongoing problem? Prayer is the key and prayer will preserve you and keep you as you sacrifice in prayer. Pray early in the morning. Pray at noonday. Pray in the evening as you sacrifice in prayer. In this season, the Lord will answer you. The Lord will preserve you. We are in a season of prayer. I heard a preacher say that prayer in this season is reigning. 
prayer is raining. The prayer bells are ringing. People are praying early in the morning, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., noonday, midnight. They're sacrificing their time in prayer. And the sacrifice is preserving them and is preserving the nations. I decree and declare that as you rise up and as we as a people, as God's people, as we rise up as an army to pray, God will preserve us. God will preserve Preserve our nation, whichever nation you are watching from. Uh, as you rise up early and pray, God will preserve the nation. Uh, your family, your children, there is preservation in the name of Jesus. Uh, we see so much happening at this time. Uh, youth stabbings, uh, wars and cry. It's prayer that will preserve and that will keep. Uh, so as you pray, know that the Lord will preserve you and your children. In Jesus' mighty name, if you believe, say amen. When Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, the king said to Daniel, your God whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. And without a doubt, the Lord delivered and preserved Daniel. I encourage you that this is the season to build or to rebuild your prayer altar. And the Lord will preserve you as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. If your prayer altar has become desecrated, I encourage you in this season, it's a season to rebuild that prayer altar. Rebuild that time in prayer. Rebuild that time in fellowship because it's in his presence, hallelujah, that you will gain strength. Strength to stand. Strength to fight. And strength to go on in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe, say amen. We read the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 1 to 4. We hear of the man Cornelius. And I read for you very quickly. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment, a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. Verse 3, about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. So we see here that Cornelius, he was said to be a devout man, a man who gave generously to people and prayed to God always. And that as he had sacrificed and as he had given many a time, year after year, time after time, given financially, given arms, helped people, his giving came up before God as a memorial that literally his sacrifice, hallelujah, invoked a visitation and a preservation for his generation. The Lord was touched, hallelujah, by his giving, by his arms. He said he was a devout man who gave generously to the people and prayed to God always. And the ninth hour of the day, an angel came down and visited him and said, your prayers and your arms have come up before God as a memorial. I prophesy to you this morning that as you give sacrifice, sacrificially, you give alms and you do good, that it will come up before the Lord as a memorial. And the Lord will use that as a form of preservation, hallelujah, on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Cornelius's sacrifice invoked a visitation. We are in the days of his power. And in these days of his power is seasons of visitation. And God visits those, hallelujah, who have sacrificed to him. Are you one who is sacrificing to the Lord? Know that it is your time and it's your season of visitation. The Lord is getting ready to visit your house. As you sacrifice in prayer, as you sacrifice in fasting, as you sacrifice your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your money, God is getting ready to visit you. He visited Cornelius and I prophesy to you uh, that your season of visitation has come uh, and that as he visits you, hallelujah, there will be a generational preservation in the name of Jesus. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 8 talks about 
David being preserved wherever he went. And because of David's lifestyle, his sacrificial lifestyle, the Lord spoke a word to Nathan and said to Nathan to tell David, David, that I'm going to preserve your generation. Because of David's sacrifice lifestyle, he preserved his generation. I prophesy to you this morning that as you give your life to the Lord, and as you give your gifts and your abilities and your talents, you sacrifice in prayer, you sacrifice before the Lord, the Lord will visit you, the Lord will preserve you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe, say amen where you are. And now I would like to say, if you are here this morning and you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Jesus is coming soon. And the Lord is preserving those that are his. So I encourage you that if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, say this prayer after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, today I give my life to you. Lord, I want my name to be written in the Lamb's book of life. And today I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me and purify me and sanctify me. Take out from me anything that's not of you. And today, Lord, I accept you as Lord and Savior in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. If you have said that prayer, you have now joined the household of faith and you have joined the household of those who are preserved. The Lord will keep you and the Lord will preserve you in the name of Jesus. Now, I want us just to pray a few prayer points. The first prayer point is you're going to say, Lord, help me to live a life of sacrifice to you in the name of Jesus. The prayer point simply is, Lord, help me to live a life of sacrifice to you in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray. Yeah? And Father, right now, we ask you uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we will live a life of sacrifice to you. Uh, Lord, sacrifice in fasting, uh, sacrifice in prayer, sacrifice of our abilities, sacrifice of our talents, uh, sacrifice God, uh, Lord, of our gifts, of our money, of our substance. Uh, did you not say in Psalm 50 verse 5, uh, gather together for me, uh, those who've made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Uh, Lord, we bring ourselves before you this morning uh, and we say, God, we are those, uh, Lord, who want to live sacrificial living. We want those who are going to be those who are gathered before you uh, as those you recognize who have sacrificed. Uh, Lord, help us to live sacrificial before you, God, sacrificially in our, in our prayer life, uh, sacrificially in our giving, uh, sacrificial, God, in our gifts and our talents and our abilities, in winning the lost at any cost, sacrificing in your kingdom. Father, Lord, let the anointing of sacrifice come upon us, Lord, that we can be used for your glory in Jesus' mighty name. And secondly, you're just going to say, Lord, preserve me, preserve my family, and preserve my generation in the name of Jesus. Let us begin to pray. Uh, Father, right now, we ask God that you will continue to keep us and preserve us. Uh, Lord, in this season and this time, uh, perilous times that are before us, uh, Lord, we ask God for your preservation. Uh, Lord, we ask that you will keep us. Uh, Lord, that we ask that you will keep our families, our children. Uh, Lord, the youth who are going out every day, going to school. Uh, Lord, we ask God, preserve our children uh, from knife crime and from turbulence and from violence. Uh, God, we ask for your preservation. Uh, preserve our husbands and our wives and our children and our family members. Uh, God, we ask for your preservation. Uh, Lord, you preserved Ruth. Uh, Lord, you preserved Daniel. Uh, Lord, you preserved David. Uh, Lord, you preserved Esther. God, we ask for your preservation. Lord, we pray that, Lord, even in our daily lives, uh, wherever there's conspiracies, uh, wherever there's problems, uh, wherever there's difficulties, uh, wherever there's sicknesses. God, we ask God that by your power that you would preserve us. You said, gather together for me those who've made a covenant by sacrifice. And Lord, as we're before you and we are saying that we are going to make sacrifices, Lord, and we want to live sacrificial living, God, we want to be one of those that will be before you, that you will gather in the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you and we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, right now I prophesy over every single person under the sound of my voice this morning, Lord, that as they've heard this message of preservation through sacrifice, God, help us, Lord, as we've heard your word, to live the life of sacrifice. Thank you for those, God, who've accepted you as Lord and Savior. Thank you from today, their lives will never be the same again. And every single person under the sound of my 
voice. Thank you, Lord, for their lives being preserved through sacrifice in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you, God, for your preservation upon our lives. Thank you that our lives will never be the same again. Thank you that in this season, as we sacrifice, that you will visit each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in the sixth month you visited Mary. So thank you for our visitation because of the life of sacrifice. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. From the moment that I wake up. Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. If you would like us to pray with you, or perhaps you have a testimony you wish to share, please contact us by email or telephone. Our email address is admin at ntcgcathedralofpraise.org.uk or telephone 0208-888-9427. We look forward to hearing from you. Giving is a part of worship. Your gifts enable us to fulfill our mandate of reaching people, changing lives, and advancing the kingdom of God. Your donations, tithes, and offerings can be given via the account details on your screen. Alternatively, you may wish to contact us on 0208 888 9427. That's 0208 888 9427. And I have lived in the good news.
Yeah. 